On a hideous down day like this one, you know what group hung in there? You know which cohort actually went higher? The utilities. In fact, the whole sector has been doing pretty well all year. Strongest sector I follow. Take Energy Energy, the owner of the largest fleet of power plants in the United States. With a stock that's up over 13% year to date, more than half their power generation comes from coal, with oil and gas coming in second. Though the company does have sizable solar and wind portfolio, as well as a decent nuclear business. Now, energy is in all of the right places. They get 50% of the business from Texas, which has one of the tightest power markets in the country. Prices are expected to rise pretty substantially there over the next few years. Energy also just closed in on a $2.64 billion Edison Mission acquisition. I think this thing was brilliant, frankly. It's a deal that's looking like it could be very beneficial for the company down the road, maybe sooner. Maybe most, most of the important thing we want to talk about, though, energy as a vision. That's right. In the March investor letter from David Crane, the CEO, he says he wants to become the Amazon, Apple, Facebook, or Google of the energy world, although given the declines in the stocks today, maybe he's glad to be the NRG of the utility world. David thinks we're headed toward a clean energy economy, a world of distributed power generation that gives individual choice back to the American energy consumer. And that, that's among the reasons why NRG spun off energy yield, NYLD for you home gamers last July. The company gives investors a vehicle to capture premium value from contracted power assets and rewards them with a bountiful div dividend, one that yields 3.4%. Now, energy yield came public at 22, rose 24% on its first day of trading, and has rallied since another 52% in the aftermarket to $42 and change. In other words, it's nearly doubled from the IPO price, which is why the yield is now below that of many competitors. I call it a high-quality problem. So let's check in with David Crane, the visionary president and CEO of Energy Energy and a law school classmate of mine, to find out more about his company, what it's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Crane, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, David. Jim, good Thank to see you. Good to see you. Now, normally, look, we'd be talking about, well, geez, how's the quarter and, the, and the, the fantastic deal you just did? And I want to get into that. But when someone, I read an investor letter from the C CEO, and it says there, there is no Amazon, Apple, Facebook, or Google in the American energy industry today. I'm sorry. i got to start with that. Well, I mean, if you look at those four companies, the first thing you start from a, from a shareholder perspective, they've created about a trillion dollars of market cap. <laughs> right. about, so it's a good model to follow. But... You know, trying to analyze them and extrapolate to our industry, they offer a ubiquitous, ubiquitous product that, uh, that, that everyone uses every day, and they do it in a seamless way. As you said, they empower people, but they actually do it for you. And there's just no one doing that in the energy uh, world because energy has, has historically been force-fed onto the public. You don't pick who you get your energy from. You don't get where it was uh, sourced, and, and all that's going to change. But, uh, but let's play skeptic here. I mean, this is just an industry that's hidebound, and one visionary among hundreds of execs who, frankly, are just thinking about the Public Utility Commission in the next meeting can't pull it off. No, well, that's true. One person can't, uh, but, you know, one person starts the village and then the village uh, grows. So I, I think that there are more people coming. And if we had been having this conversation a year ago, I, would, I think you would have thought that the way I'm thinking about this is pretty isolated. Right. I actually think with some of the technology revolution that's occurred in our space, a lot of people are thinking the way I am, I just think it's going to happen a lot quicker than most other people in the industry. And as you know, timing is everything in True. investing. Now, if we're going to have the world you're talking about, what is going to be the level of government involvement and subsidy? Well, th there's all this dispute about, you know, which part of the energy sector is most subsidized by the, the government. I mean, the, you know, and everyone points at everyone else. And, and, you know, I really don't have time for that debate. All I know is that, you know, some of the key technology changes of which the, the, the precipitous drop in the price of solar and the fact that, you know, in half the country within the next couple of years, you'll be able to put solar on your house and make power cheaper at your own house with more resilience from the grid in terms of teardown events than it, than it costs you to get from the grid. If half the United States, if that makes economic sense for them, quite apart from the environmental benefit, why aren't all Americans going to do it? And there are a lot of houses in the United States. Okay, so let's let, I think you know your industry, but I, I think the average person doesn't. And the first thing I would say is, well, wait a second, David. We, um, it's not sunny everywhere. Then what's, the, what's the actual scientific retort to that? Well, actually, you know, compare the, the initial renewable source of energy was was wind. And, the, the, you know, the one thing about solar has over wind is you have a pretty good idea when the sun's going to come up and what's going to go down. So it's a little bit more reliable. But this solar photovoltaic technology, I mean, initially people thought, well, it only really works in the Arizona desert, but it actually handles diffuse light pretty well. So if you think that Germany is one of the largest users of solar photovoltaic, and if you look at a solar insulation map, Germany looks like Alaska. 
So, so the so the lower <laughs> the lower 48 all look like an attractive solar energy market relative to to Germany. All right. So, is America uh, say 20 years ago? There's a great line that you talk about. The only real question is how quickly will this future occur? Because everyone seems to do, accept it. But are we talking about 20 years from now when we buy a house, we should expect that there's a solar panel on top, and maybe we're getting paid by the utility as opposed to paying them? Well, I guess the, would you be paid by the utility if the utility still exists 20 years from now? Because uh, but, you know, the reason I put the 20 years in there is that the closest parallel to what's happening in our space is what happened in the telecom space. Right. Right. And, and from my view, it took about 20 to 25 years for the cell phone technology to completely overwhelm fixed line telephony. Right. But, of course, Wall Street saw it. I mean, the, the, you could see the end coming 10 years before the end actually came. Right. And sort of, as you know, the equity markets anticipate uh, change. So, so we think that this is going to be on us like in a heartbeat. All right, well, then the last question I have is, if that's the case, there's a lot of NRG that doesn't fit the description of distributable energy. What happens to that? Well, one of the things we have to keep in our mind, and particularly coming out of this winter, is, you know, it's nice to have the strategy for 5, 10, 15 years in the future, but we got to keep the lights on right now. And, uh, and this was a tough winter that way. So, you know, the average age of, a, of an NRG uh, coal plant is 43 years old. So when I talk about what I talk about in the letter, I talk about what we build that's going to be here for the next couple of generations. It's not sort of really saying anything right. about the fact that we still need a lot of the technology that's keeping the lights on, you know, for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Well, you've got the perspective of both the near term and the long term that investors want. That was David Crane. He's the president and CEO of NRG Energy, by far the most forward-looking CEO in the industry. Mad Bunny's back at the break.